On October 6, 1973, Egyptian and Syrian forces launched surprise attacks against Israel in the Sinai Desert and the Golan Heights. Jews around the world praying in synagogues on Yom Kippur were shocked by the breakout of war on the holiest day of the Jewish year. Mr. Chaim Ben Eliezer was serving in the Israeli Defense Forces when the Yom Kippur War erupted. Yom Kippur, I was, uh, actually all of us, was on alert, something was going around, so nobody left the base in that day. And two o'clock, exactly two o'clock, was the first Egyptian attack. The first Egyptian attack was on our base. It was a transportation base. We had about 400 big truck on the base. And uh, a MiG was approaching our base. I'm looking upstairs. It's Yom Kippur. It doesn't make sense that the Israeli Air Force is flying on Yom Kippur. So I said, come on, come on. What is that? Look. We look up and he recognized it's a MiG. It's an Egyptian MiG. And this mix started coming down toward the base for uh, bombarding the base. We start screaming to everybody to take uh, shelter. Basically, this is about the beginning of the war. On the other side of the world, Mr. Ephraim Carmel was a student in Chicago at the time. Along with many others, he quickly flew back to Israel to fight in the war. And like I was uh, brought up in, in Israel, Yom Kippur is a very somber day, and we, uh, we always... Uh, prepare for it, from Rosh Hashanah, Chodesh Elul, and of course uh, go to Bet Knesset and, and, and stay in Bet Knesset in the shul all day. Uh, when we came back to Mincha, we had a little break before Mincha, the rabbi announced that uh, a war broke out in Israel. So we didn't take it that seriously. However, at Motzei Yom Kippur, when we came home, and the telephone started to ring, and the television and so on, we understood that uh, it is serious, it is serious. But we still believed that Israel has the capability to defend itself, and at the end, everything will be fine. After two weeks of intense battle, the Israelis were able to push back the invading armies. But for several months after, Israeli soldiers remained on alert, diligently guarding the borders. It was on Hanukkah during this difficult time that the soldiers received a special surprise. So suddenly, the first night of Hanukkah, as we are getting ready, uh, I, got a, I got a phone call that uh, some strange people <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a truck are coming and they, they have orders to come uh, to us and, and uh, celebrate Hanukkah. And they have a message. Uh, they said that they introduced themselves, they're Hasidei Chabad, you know, in Hebrew, of course. And they had a message that they have to uh, come to every soldier on the front line and uh, bring them the message from the Rebbe, and a little uh, money for tzedakah, and also uh, drinking and, and, and food to drink and to light with us the Hanukkah candles. It was a big surprise. Because we haven't seen civilians for a long time. <laughs> And uh, also, also was a great uh, simcha, simcha. Over one year into the 13th cycle of Daf Yomi, Jews around the world are now completing the Gemara Yoma, which describes the laws and observances of Yom Kippur. In Albany, New York, Salo Stepper leads the Daf Yomi Shir, which is a joint project of congregations Beth Abraham Jacob and Shomrei Torah. We, we started learning Daf Yoma about, uh, about uh, two months ago three months, two and a half months ago, and uh, uh, basically what Yom is about is about the Kohen Gadol and all the work he has to do on Yom Kippur, because all the things that are done on Yom Kippur are done through him, and the training that he gets to, to do it properly and to do it well and to do it clearly. But this is like the intensity of basic training. You know, when, when I was in the Army, this is like uh, what basic training is all about. The intensity is day in and day out, from the morning, from early morning to late at night. You're, in, you're involved in training for... for potential uh, war, whatever it is. As I was learning the Gemara and learning everything that the Kohen Gadol goes through, the, the, uh, that feeling increased within me. And I felt that, uh, that an appropriate group to remember is not just you know, the individual uh, who did certain things or didn't do certain things, but the 
all the tens of thousands who got who were tapped on the shoulder one morning on Yom Kippur morning, and were told to go out and face intense combat. And this is really this this is the spirit of the Kohen Gadol that he faced when he went into the inside inside the uh, the uh, the Holy of Holies, all by himself. Okay, and and had to pray for the for the future of the Jewish people. And here the Jewish people was was totally dependent on the. Uh, on these people who are willing to go up and ready to go, and ready to go, and, and I think they deserve, they deserve recognition for what they did. One of the leading generals of the Yom Kippur War was former Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. In light of his recent passing, people worldwide are reflecting on his memory and his legacy. He was a very brave man, a brave uh, military man, but at that time he was a hero, and everybody uh, believed in him, and uh, to be in his uh, division was a great honor. Ariel, even his name, so to speak, represents the base Middash, because the base Middash really had the fire that was in the center of the base Middash on the Mizbeach had the shape of a lion, and that was called the Ariel. They, in fact, they called it the Ariel. Ariel Sharon, I met him personally, and I have a special story for, about him. In uh, 1982, Lebanon War. Uh, Ariel Sharon was the Minister of Defense at this time. And he asked all the troops around to come. He wanted to explain everybody why we are here, why we are so deep. So he, he was okay, everybody came and he was talking to everybody. And after he finished his uh, talk, I approached him and I said, uh, Can you do me a favor? He said, Sure, what can I do for you? I said, the only thing I want, if you can call my parents, tell them I'm okay. Because we didn't have any communication with them in this time. The communication was bad. Nobody at home knew what's going on. We are alive there. What's going on? So yeah, give me a telephone number. I give him a telephone number. I didn't believe you're going to do that. I mean, ah, the Minister of Defense, and Ariel Sharon, he always well known as. Same day at 12 o'clock at night, midnight, my father got a telephone at home. And uh, the other end says, uh, Ben Eliezer, yeah, it's Ariel Sharon on the telephone. So, what happened to my son? You know, I was killed. Midnight, Ariel Sharon. So, no, no, nothing happened. I mean, I just met him this morning and uh, he asked me to call you and tell you that everything is okay and don't worry. <laughs> so, this kind of person was Ariel Sharon. He was a very, he was a big leader, he was very tough, but he also had a, a very large heart to the little soldier, whatever he is, he had feeling and uh, decided that he was a great leader. He did moves. Some people like to hate him, some people like to love him, but nobody can take from him the leadership. As a father whose sons serve in the IDF, I have a hard relationship with certain religious Jews whose sons don't serve. But then I think, I can't be sure that my grandchildren will remain Jewish, but the religious guard the future flame of Judaism. I am first and foremost a Jew, and the concern of Jewish continuity gives me no rest. So it is actually the religious who provide security. We, at 5.55 in the morning, we get up and learn Daf Yomi, okay, to connect the Jewish people to their Torah and everything else. So in honor of Ariel Sharon, in honor of his sons who get up at 5.55, in honor, in honor of all the Israelis who have to serve in the army and do difficult things. When we get up at 5.55 in the morning, we're identifying with them. And we're connecting the Jewish people to, to the to Jewish people of the past and to the Jewish people of the future. And they're making the, sure that the Jewish people of today continue to, to uh, survive in a, difficult, in a difficult world. As Daf Yomi completes Tractate Yoma, it moves directly into the next Gemara Sukkah, the same Talmud that local day school students are studying in class. Young and old, soldier and student, in Israel, Albany, and all around the world, they all work towards Jewish unity and continuity. Mm -hmm.